I've been sitting here in my truck for the last 20 minutes. I keep my eyes tightly shut and focus on my breathing. I apply pressure to the gunshot wound in my abdomen and wonder why every movie I've ever watched has lied to me about the sheer amount of pain a bullet can cause. This girl here met her just today, about 12 hours ago. After the initial shock, I asked her to drive me to the nearest hospital and drop me off, which seems ridiculous, as I'm giving myself a 5% chance of making it there. I'm gonna miss this old truck of mine. Been a hell of a day. Pretty spectacular. Right up until the moment I got shot. I'm released from county jail at 8 a.m. sharp. I call my mother as a free man for the first time in two years. She's all too excited to tell me about my astrological sign, the cards she's already drawn for me, the Powerball numbers this evening, and what it all means. She mentions all the bills piling up and the maxed out credit cards she's behind on. Apparently, some guy who's been helping her out has recently moved in. Then, as luck may or may not have it, this tough looking fella starts talking about a job. Something about a briefcase, the city of Inglewood, money, drugs, the usual. I pretend to listen to my mother while I pretend not to listen in on him. I will see you tonight. Having been just released from jail, I decide it's probably best not to get involved. I start to walk away when suddenly, he's 50 feet away when the phone rings. I check in on him, but he doesn't hear it over all the traffic. I wonder to myself if I should answer it. I figure, what's the worst that can happen? I pick up the phone and don't say a word. I let them do all the talking. I write down some information and hang up. I buy a cowboy hat because the tough looking fella had one on. And well, I wanted to look the part. Hey puppy dog. I meet with some guy who reeks of too much cheap cologne. He tells me I look younger than he expected. I tell him to piss off, and I mention the job in Inglewood. I threaten to leave, but he asks me to stay. I'm given a briefcase, a gun, and instructions. He doesn't anticipate anything going wrong. I ask him then why the gun? He grins, says it's like a condom. Better to have it and not need it, than need it and not have it. <laughs> I wonder how long he's been waiting to use that stupid analogy. It's nearly noon, so I've got 10 hours to kill. I stop for food at some shitty little diner off the beaten path. And then she shows up. The most beautiful woman I've ever laid eyes on appears in front of me. I can't remember what I ordered because all I can think about is her gorgeous red hair. She laughs <laughs> more than she should at one of my stupid jokes. I asked if she'd like to go on a walk with me. Lucky for me, she's off in 10. Even luckier, she said yes. She points to this old classic truck and how no modern vehicle has even a fraction of the style. I tell her it's mine and she literally jumps into the back. We talk about everything and nothing. I know her favorite food and her least favorite vegetable. I know her mom and dad separated when she was 12 she wanted to be a vet when she got older. I know she prefers donuts over croissants. We hold hands and laugh like children. If it were raining, we'd have danced in it. I can go on and on about this magical human being I just met. She asked me to join her later tonight at the local movie theater, the only one in town, to watch a classic black and white film from the 60s, projected on 35 millimeter celluloid film Speaking of my heart, this one is.
and I may have fallen in love. I tell her I would love to see her after this thing I have to do. So I get in my truck and I drive 50 miles east of downtown Los Angeles. The whole drive there, I think of only her, her face, her smile, her eyes, her beautiful red hair. It feels like I've been in my truck for five minutes and I'm already here. I grab the briefcase and gun Mr. Too Much Cologne gave me earlier and I walk in, expecting the worst. My hands are sweaty and I can feel my heart pounding inside my chest. But this, this could be my ticket out of here. It's 90 degrees outside, yet I'm freezing cold. She yells to me that we're close, just over a mile to go. The thought of my mother winning the Powerball plays over and over in my head, giving me peace. Mine is not a story about wrong place, wrong time. You follow the road, not because you know the way, but because it feels familiar. I thought this was my chance to escape, to change the narrative to retell it all, knowing you made a choice instead of someone making it for you. <laughs> 